A lot of you guys told me that a throttle spacer kit is one of the easiest and best improvements you can make to a Triumph Speed Twin. Today, I'm going to find out just how easy by installing this mod while riding. Here we go! You really thought I was going to do it, didn't you? No, I installed it before I left the house this morning. Good morning, riders and ridettes. Welcome aboard. Do you remember, like, two weeks ago when I said that I had my Triumph Speed Twin set up the way I wanted it and that I wasn't going to make any more changes? Yeah, me neither. One of the very few drawbacks of this motorcycle is that the throttle is kind of snatchy. It's like an on-off switch. No matter how gently I open up the throttle, there's still a tiny little, like, lash as the power makes its way to the rear wheel. I find myself riding in rain mode about 70% of the time, uh, all of the time that I'm in the city for sure. And sport mode, the most aggressive of the three modes, I would say I only use that about 10% of the time, and not even out in the mountains where I do my most spirited riding. The reason for that is that the throttle snatch in sport mode is so severe that when I'm applying the power coming out of those really deep corners, that jerk that the bike makes almost threatens to break the rear wheel loose. I don't know, it might just be my imagination, but I don't like it. Now, it's not a deal breaker, it doesn't ruin this motorcycle or anything, but so many of you told me about this $32 throttle spacer that I figured I had to give it a try. The kit is from Ducati Spacers. Uh, it turns out that Ducati sources their throttles from the same place as a lot of other bike manufacturers, and so the spacer kit also happens to work on this particular Triumph. The kit consists of two little orange plastic thingies uh, of two different sizes, a big one and a small one, and this tri-lug bit that you'll need to open up the throttle housing. This kit probably cost them about 45 cents a piece. They must be making a killing, but you know what? At $32, if it improves the bike, it's still a bargain. Installation could not have been easier. Took me, took me about 10 minutes. The general belief seems to be that that throttle snatch originates from the play in the throttle, or slop as some people put it. There's a couple millimeters of movement in the throttle before it will actually engage. What the kit does is it fills in the gap between these lugs inside the throttle housing so that there is no gap and any minute movement of the throttle is applied directly to the wheels. Based on a few minutes of riding, I would say this has almost eliminated that throttle snatch in rain mode, which was tiny to begin with, and it has made road mode feel like how rain mode felt before. Now let's find out what it did for sport mode. Yeah, okay. I would say sport mode now feels how road mode felt before. So the modes all kind of took one step down in the level of throttle snatch that they exhibit. Yeah, that's a big improvement. So I'm thinking that after this, rain mode will just be relegated to rain, of course and stop and go traffic. I think I'll be able to use road mode almost all of the rest of the time. And most importantly, I'll actually be able to use sport mode on those fun mountain roads where it was meant to be used. Now the real test is gonna be if I feel comfortable lane splitting in road or sport mode. Filtering is the urban gymkhana and requires perhaps the most precision of any of the riding I do. If this spacer mod has cured enough of the throttle snatchiness that I can do that in sport mode, I will be really impressed. Oh, 
Only problem is that there isn't really any traffic right now due to the apocalypse, so I don't think I'll get to properly test that for a while. So the reason I hesitated to do this kit until now was because I believed that the throttle snatch came from the electronic fueling, not from the play in the actual throttle itself. And I think I was partly right. I think that some of the throttle snatch could be attributed to the play in the throttle, and some of it could be attributed to just the natural characteristics of an EFI engine. So it makes sense that filling in those gaps inside the throttle housing cured some of that snatchiness, but not all of it. Again, it was fine before, and it's not a night and day difference. If you had test ridden a speed twin and hated it because of that lash in the throttle, this is not gonna change your mind and make you wanna buy a speed twin. But if you own one and you wanna spend $32 and have a marked improvement in the rideability of this bike, I can recommend this Ducati Spacer kit. So I wanna thank everybody who recommended this kit to me. This was really worthwhile and I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't gotten so many comments about it on my previous mods video, which you should check out if you haven't already. If you're a new or returning viewer and you want to know what I get up to with this speed twin in between videos, I recommend following Van Blam on Instagram. If you are an Instagram user, post what you're getting up to with your motorcycle during the quarantine and use the hashtag WaitFaster. There's so little to do while we wait this thing out that motorcycling is just the perfect escape. Even if you're choosing not to ride at this time for your safety or the safety of your community, anybody who's got a project going on in the garage right now, they're waiting faster too. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.